We're back with the Klingons once again. Strange Worlds Episode 8 sees a Klingon ambassador beam aboard the Enterprise. However, it appears that he has ties to the past of the crew. An element of this episode which does very well is flashbacks to the past. These flashbacks take place during the time of Star Trek Discovery Season 1, specifically during the Klingon Federation War. Perhaps one of the darkest episodes of Strange New World so far, this episode really goes dark in exploring PTSD and the horrors of a war in Star Trek. It reminds me of Star Trek Deep Space Nine's episode, The Siege of AR-558. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack, and if you want to keep up to date with the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from your team here at Trek Central. Okay, hit it. Former Klingon General Dak Ra, son of Raul, now just Federation Ambassador Ra, after defecting from the Klingon Empire to the Federation either during or just after the Klingon Federation War, is beaming aboard the Enterprise. He is known as the Butcher of Dragal, but we get some very interesting developments in this episode, and by the end of the episode, we learn he actually isn't. He's a coward who's been using the title of Klingon General, who butchered his own men, so not only cover for the atrocities he ordered, but use it to become a powerful voice for peace. Convenient. If he was dealing with Saints, perhaps we'd have got Klingon Federation peace way earlier than actually happened, but unfortunately he was using the blood on Mbenga's hands to make himself a saint which is one of my favourite lines delivered expertly by Babs Ula Sekerman during this episode. We do get some interesting scenes with Dak Ra before his death in the episode. We see some Mok Bara, a Klingon martial art, shin off usually by a wharf. He actually talks about comparisons between Sun Tzu's Art of War to Klingon texts, and really wanting peace it seems. He was played very well by Robert Wisdom, who provided a level of presence whenever he entered a room and spoke. I think it would have been great to either see him as a coward in the past to shatter this illusion he made up for himself, or seen a truly in a flashback, much like he was in Klingon armour. That would have kind of solved the deal for me. This episode is very much a Dr. Mbenga episode, as well as a bit of an Ortigas episode as well, and just generally for the crew of the Enterprise. One tries to save lives and one takes lives, but the lines between Ambassador Ra and Dr. Mbenga blur in a satisfying way this episode. One is a Butcher of Jagal in name, one is a Butcher of Jagal in practice. This episode did a really good job going in depth with Joseph and Benga, explaining some character decisions from the past and being portrayed in an amazing performance by Babs. Mbenga was stationed as a field hospital on the moon of Jagal, under the command of Buck, who was excellently played by Clint Howard, with this being his fifth appearance in many Trek shows, starting as a kid in the original series to now Strange New Worlds. Almost full circle at this point. We get to see some very interesting faces of Joseph and Benga. We've seen in the season that he's a very strong person and extremely good in a fight. He's even looked up to by Starfleet Special Forces and asked to help him with a mission on Jagal, which he initially rejects, wanting to focus on being a doctor and healing people, not a soldier and killing people. We see Mbenga having to deal with some moral questions and quickly deciding what is the least bad option is. With a pattern being stored in a transport buffer and a load of injured soldiers needing transport, he has to decide to purge the buffer to let everyone else be transported in, but sacrifice the crewman who is in the buffer. Nurse Chapel believes it is wrong and can't do it, but Mbenga, even if he does believe it is wrong, he does it anyway. Very Vulcan in, the needs of many outweigh the needs of a few. I'm sure in the different circumstances, he might not have made that choice, but in an active war zone, he quickly chose the option to save as many people as possible and leave one to die. Another aspect of this episode we revisits, but I suppose we should look at it in a seeding of the episode, was the Protocol 12, the wonder drug that many fans were confused about in The Broken Circle. The first episode of Season 2 that was. We learned that the Federation discontinued it due to health risks, and Mbenga invented it, which explains why he is the only one seen of it, and Mbenga only has it but no one else has it. I have to say, Babs did a stellar job in this episode. We saw Mbenga at the most vulnerable we have seen him, and the most dangerous we've seen him. We see him having a panic attack in his office after seeing a man he believes turn himself into the monster. He sees Butch of Dragal, but really, he sees himself and who he is underneath the cheer from Mbenga we've come to love. There is a nice scene of Mbenga in a sonic shower, and I have to add it is a nice looking sonic shower with a mix between the hexagonal pattern one from Voyager and the lights from a motion picture. Anyway, the scene of Mbenga in the sonic shower is when he's most vulnerable and Babs plays this so so well. Now perhaps as Mbenga usually speaks in quite hushed tones, but hearing him raise his voice to Ra was great. It made me focus on him and realise it's a very different side of Mbenga that we've seen, and now we've got two whole seasons of content, we can definitely lay it all out and see it in a different way. 
I will say, it's also nice to see where Chapel and Mamenga first met and became friends. I feel like there's still some backstory we can get on Mbenga in the future. I was actually expecting the episode to maybe get rid of Mbenga after he killed the ambassador, explaining his demotion from chief medical officer with Bones being chief medical officer in the original series. I am both glad this isn't the case because I want more Ben Benga, but also this would have been a great opportunity to do that and surprise introduce say Dr. McCoy for example. It could have been a very interesting and bold move by Strange New Worlds and for a season or a second season that is taking bold moves, maybe they miss this one. We still need to figure out why Ben Benga was looked up to by special forces. Why is he good at combat? What is his upbringing? Another event in the past perhaps? Might this have changed when he met his wife and had a child? Hopefully they'll give us some more stories of Mbenga's past in future seasons of Strange New Worlds. By the way, can we comment on Chris Pike and Mbenga's friendship here? I love him and Mbenga is like the only person on the ship, apart from I think number one, who calls him Chris. Rather touching. As mentioned, this episode does flash back to the Federation Klingon War. While it was featured heavily in Star Trek Discovery, we did not really see the atrocities on the front lines. Well yes, we saw the Battle of the Binary Stars, which kind of started the whole thing, we did not see the dark side of the actual front lines. Here, via flashes of Dr. Mbenga and Nurse Chapel, we see how bloody the conflict actually is. It shows off a PTSD that Mbenga is suffering due to the Battle of Jigal, one of the Federation's bloodiest conflicts. We learn from Dr. Mbenga's tablet that the battle saw over 200,000 casualties just on one moon. It sounds like most of these casualties were civilians, so a normal Federation civilian would probably be deeply scarred from the Klingon War. I mean, who wouldn't be? The phrase, remain Klingon, comes up once again. Eric Ortigas brings it up during dinner with the Ambassador. This was a Klingon battle cry that was shouted during the Star Trek Discovery episodes and was initially mentioned by Takuvma, who was a Klingon warrior who coined the phrase, Remain Klingon. Also, I know many people didn't like Takuvma, but the name Takuvma, very cool. I can't do a good impression of him, maybe one of you can. Now it's really cool to see this phrase and tiny detail coming back. I've got to say, Strange New Worlds is doing a fantastic job of adding more detail to the timeline of Star Trek Discovery and events like this war. This episode also did add that some Klingons did have their hair and look like regular Klingons during the war. Not all of them look like Discovery Klingons. It's a slight but subtle retcon, but I'm not going to complain about it. Yes, Discovery Klingons are not that bad, but also, I, I don't know, it's fine. Like, I I'm not losing sleep over it personally. Now obviously one could say that a retconning the look of Discovery Klingons to look like regular Klingons, but without showing the Discovery Klingons and the Klingons war scene in Discovery in the previous section of the episode, I will say it's more complementing and diversifying the Klingon Empire in the mid 23rd century. Not all Klingons were affected by the virus that made them look humanoid, or more human should I say, so that's something to keep in mind. Talking about Ortegas, an aspect of this episode is that it further helps explain their previous episode's choice in an interesting way. In the season 1 final, A Quality of Mercy, Ortega was cast as a Styles-like character, the bigot on the Enterprise bridge who couldn't help but connect the Romulans to the Vulcans in the worst way due to their shared appearance. Episode 8, Under the Cloak of War, was written by David Perez and directed by Jeff W. Bird. The writing of this episode is very well done, comparing the journey of Benga in the episode like the Broken Biobed from a Gorn attack on Thimbus 3. War changes people, and that change, even if we've healed, can come back indiscriminately, it never goes away, we just manage it. The ending conversation between Dr. Mbenga and Chris of Pike was rather touching, and it does make you think if you listen closely to watch what both characters are saying. Pike believes in the Federation and what it stands for, as well as giving others a second chance to atone for their past sins. While on the total flip side, Mbenga has seen the horrors and lived an extremely rough life where it's hard to forgive. Pike has the privilege of not serving in the war and seeing the Federation through this idealistic lens. Then Benga sees the war through the medical lens, seeing it as a disease that they have to fight so they can live in peace. The directing and editing for this episode was great. The episode managed to weave flashbacks throughout the episode in a satisfying way. Flashbacks, if done wrong, can completely wreck the momentum of an episode, but just like Klingon Judo, Mokbara, you can carry the momentum through these scenes, and it works so so well. The shots that help enhance Mbenga's feelings throughout the episode with the tight shots during his most vulnerable moments are also done very well to sort of sell the effect of PTSD and this sort of panic attack. Can we also take a moment to highlight the new type of starship? It is definitely a unique design and I can't wait to take a deeper look at the starship at some point. It is quite long and doesn't have much width to it with a singular nacelle, which is a very striking design next to the Enterprise and I kind of want to see more about this. We also have a TOS looking runabout in the episode providing troops to Jagal, and I hope this ship is a precursor to the runabouts from the next generation and Deep Space Nine. So what do you think of the latest Strange New Worlds episode? I almost called it Strange New Wars there for a second. 
that would have been a weird one. Don't forget that this week we're live on twitch.tv slash to talk all things Star Trek and the latest episode. Tune in at 2000 hours BST for the live conversation. Don't forget, next week we have a music lapse of the Strange New Worlds. Oh boy, oh boy, that's going to be an interesting one. So we'll see you back here on Tuesday for the preview video of the episode. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you later this week with a new video. Live long and prosper my friends, goodbye.